Dungeons & Dragons has a lot of subclasses, and choosing the correct ones for your characters can be incredibly difficult. As of right now, there are somewhere around 106 different subclasses. Don't quote me on that, I'm sure the number has changed and it will continue to change over the course of time as new things come out. But this means it can be really difficult to choose which one is the best for your character, mechanically, roleplay-wise, and, well, all the rest. So let's talk about that. I've noticed that when it comes to choosing a subclass for your character, there are a few different steps that I typically follow that make it a little bit easier for me, and hopefully they can help you guys out. But usually what it comes down to is one, figuring out what you want your character to be able to do. What is the vibe, what is the personality, and what do you want them to be able to do in order to support the party. The second thing that I do is then figure out which subclass matches that mechanically. And that can be a lot more difficult than you might think. There are a lot of different subclasses that add different abilities, but when it comes down to D&D 5e, the class specifically is more often what actually dictates what your character can do, and subclasses just sort of augment that. And so it could be difficult to figure that out. And thirdly, it just comes down to what is it that you're excited to play and what's your favorite type of character. But let's start with the first one, figuring out exactly what it is that you want your character to be able to do. When you look at your character, oftentimes the class, as I just stated, usually dictates what you're wanting. If you're playing a barbarian or a fighter, more than likely, you're gonna wanna hit things hard. That's just kind of what the classes are made for. If you wanna play a spellcaster, there's a lot more flexibility, but even so, amongst the spellcasters, they tend to lean towards different ways. Clerics and druids typically go towards healing. While you look at something like a bard or a wizard, and they typically lean towards something like utility. It's really different, but at the same time, you can pretty much make any of the classes do what it is that you want, if you work with it properly. The problem is, is when you look at it and you decide what class you're excited about, you then have to decide what your role in the party is going to be mechanically. And that's where it starts to get just a little bit dicey. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll figure out the vibe of my character. Do I wanna play a witch-like character? Do I wanna play a big brawny fighter? Well, there's a lot of different options that could fit those two archetypes, but once you've narrowed that down and you start to look at the classes, figure out which one you wanna play. If I wanna play a big brawny fighter, probably barbarian, or if I wanna play a witchy archetype, wizard or druid, typically tend to lean towards that, then I get to look at the subclasses and figure out which of those is going to start filling what I want. But that's when you have to figure out what mechanically is going to best benefit the type of playstyle that you're going for. Well, let me show you. So when choosing your subclass and looking at the mechanics of it, that's where most people enjoy making characters. When you're trying to decide what subclass you should play, you look at what the mechanics are and then the flavor secondary, at least I do. And I know that's interesting because most of the time I talk about flavor first, but subclasses really do create an interesting dichotomy because they supplement the flavor of the class, but also provide a much stronger mechanical output. Let me put it like this. I mentioned barbarians earlier. If you're playing a barbarian, you're probably thinking about playing a big, huge, meaty cannon of damage. That's typically what they do. But when you look at the subclasses, it can change quite a bit. If you look at something like, say, Ancestral Guardian Barbarians, they are a fantastic support subclass. They have the ability to initiate disadvantage on enemies who try to hit their foes and draw enemies to them in order to protect the rest of their allies. That's hugely beneficial and helpful. But if you look at something like a Zealot Barbarian, they're a lot more focused on doing damage. And yes, they are incredibly supportive. I mean, they do have their Zealots cry, but they have a different flavor of support than the Ancestral Guardian. But not all of the Barbarian subclasses are supportive. If you look at something like Totem Barbarian, it's pretty much just focused on making you the most effective Barbarian you can be. And so you look at all those subclasses and they can seriously impact the type of character that you chose to play. If you wanted to play a tanky supportive Barbarian, then those first two were the option. But the point is, is that subclass really affects what it is that you want to play. And so when you're looking at the subclasses, the first thing that I do is choose one based off of what it is that I was hoping the character would be able to do. And the second thing I do is choose one based off of what I was hoping the character would appear as. For example, we'll take rangers. If I wanted to make a ranger who is just incredibly good at ambushing people, Gloomstalker is the way to go. It's pretty much the best one there. I mean, the first round of combat, you get extra movement speed and an extra attack plus extra damage. You're not gonna get any better than that. But say, maybe I wasn't looking for a ranger who is necessary Gloomstalker-esque. Maybe I was leaning towards more of a tracker and hunter, in which case, like I stated earlier, did I, did I talk about ranger archetypes in the intro? We'll just ignore that. In which case, I would probably go towards Monster Slayer. And then after choosing those two archetypes and putting them together, I would start to observe them and look at them and figure out which ones are going to fulfill exactly what I'm looking for. Am I looking for one that's really gonna fill that flavor? Or am I looking for one that's really gonna fill the mechanics of what I'm looking for? And don't forget, flavor is secondary. 
mechanics can really be flavored as anything that you want. Yes, the Gloomstalker is this dark and, and shadowy figure, but you can definitely flavor it to be something else. It might be a little difficult because they have specific abilities ranging towards dark vision, superior dark vision, hiding in the dark, etc. But you still can flavor it as something else if you really want to, as long as your DM's on board with it. But that's really where things get difficult, is making sure that the mechanics fit while also finding that flavor that you really want. And so I will often compare those two things, figure out exactly what it is that I'm looking for, and then start to move on from there. But just remember, don't get too bogged down in the mechanics. Find the ones that will let you play dice-wise the character you want, while still also letting you play flavor and story-wise the character you want. And finding the two comparisons between those can be difficult, but it's certainly not impossible. But that doesn't account for all scenarios, now does it? Say you're trying to figure this all out and you have two subclasses, but they're just totally different. You have one that is going to give you the flavor that you want, but one that really does fulfill the mechanics that you want for this type of archetype of character. Well, what do you do with that? How do you reconcile those and how do you make a decision between the two? Well, I have some advice for that too. The last thing that you have to do once you've done all that, you've figured out what kind of vibe you want to go for, you've figured out the playstyle, and you've figured out what's going to support it mechanically, you then typically have one or two options. If you have multiple options, the best thing to do at that point is just figure out what you're most excited for. Don't necessarily look for the one that's the most mechanically beneficial. A lot of people like doing that and there's nothing wrong with it. But if you're really having a hard time deciding between the two, just consider what the subclass is. If I want to play a ranger and I'm trying to figure out how to play the most effective battle type ranger, typically monster slayer or hunter will really fall into those categories. But which of the two do you choose? Well, which one are you most excited for? Monster Slayer has a lot of really cool abilities and so does Hunter, but which one, when you look at it, do you think, yeah, that would be really fun to use? Or you see a specific scenario in your head where you really decide that that's the sort of thing that you wanna go for. And that's how you decide which one that you're most excited for. I know it shouldn't be really difficult to have to decide, well, I'm just gonna play what I'm most excited for, but we can really get in our heads when making D&D characters. It can be so easy to start to focus too much on making sure that you are the most mechanically beneficial or the most optimal in order to help your party. And that's a good thing to do and is part of the game and a part of the game we all really enjoy. But when it comes down to it, if you are the most optimal but not having fun, is it really that helpful to do that? Is it really that helpful to go down that line of thinking and determine that sort of thing for yourself? So look at those subclasses, look at the character options, figure out what works for what you're wanting to build so that you can be optimal, but then choose the one that's just the best for fun. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're all sitting down to have fun and have a good time. It's not gonna be very helpful if yes, you're doing the most mechanically optimal thing, your dice are rolling the absolute best, but you feel like it's not the character that you set out to play. That can really be a downer and can oftentimes lead to a sour taste in our mouths. So go out into the world, make it your own, you beautiful bastards. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play your own. This video wouldn't be possible without the incredible beautiful bastards over on our Patreon. I'd like to give an additional very personal thank you to the Divine Bastards Big D the Cool Guy, BKBW, Clark Smith, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Manifestering, Rocky, Sassy Cat Productions, Sorit, Supreme Court, Talia Martin, Tin Eye, Void Mystic, Volpe Nico, and Zombies for People too. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys, and you mean the absolute world to us. Keep being beautiful, keep being amazing, and as always, make the world your own.